Mokai, and uh, I'm here today to talk a little bit about my onstage rig, uh, what guitars and amps I use, and pickups. So this guitar is a Gibson J185. It's a Montana-built Gibson from the late 80s, so uh, early edition from that shop. It's a historic recreation from the uh, J185 from the 1930s, and it's a, a maple wood guitar. Uh, really nice sounding guitar, so I wanted to reproduce the sound of that acoustic as faithfully as possible. So what I've done is I put in a system that has a condenser microphone and a transducer uh, pickup, and it's a Fishman system. Uh, and this does this comes out as a stereo uh, signal, so I have to have a stereo cable to come out of this. A lot of the um, onboard stereo blender systems that Fishman puts out now will come out mono. Uh, and what I have here is a Fishman amp, which is uh, the loud box performer. And what this does that's really interesting is it replaces the old outboard uh, pocket blender, which um, used to need as a preamp for this system. And now I just go directly to the uh, amplifier. And this is a lot better in most situations because I have a lot more control over my sound on stage than if I'm just going out from a preamp uh, direct to the board. This is a loud box performer. And what uh, the way that this is set up is if you have a stereo system, when you plug into the second channel, it knows that you've put in a tip ring sleeve uh, quarter inch, and it splits the signal so that now I have the microphone and the transducer each on a different channel. So here's the sound of just the transducer. You can hear it's a very boxy sound and then here you can hear the sound of the microphone. It's, it's got more of a resonance to it. I don't know if you can hear that difference. So what I'll do when I'm on stage, I'll start off with all the uh, EQs flat and that's as if there's no EQ in the system. And then I'll bring up the uh, volume on the transducer. Yeah, that's kind of a harsh transducer sound, kind of an more of an electric sound than I want. So what I do is I completely cut, uh, not all the way to zero, but I cut the mid mids and the highs. And now I'm just getting the low, and I'll bring up the low just a little, because what I really want that transducer for is to get kind of that bottom end. And then I'll turn that down so you can hear the microphone. And when you're turning up the microphone, you have to be really careful because you can get howling. And this uh, amp has a phantom power, which is needed for this condenser microphone. And you can see the microphone right there. It's uh, just sticking right in the sound hole. And what I'll do here is I'll, I'll listen to that. Notice it's a little quieter. And what I'll do is I'll, I usually will uh, cut some of the mids here and bring up some of the highs. And depending on how loud I'm playing on the master volume, I might uh, cut some of the lows on here too because it can get really uh, boomy on the condenser. And then I have the lows on the transducer. It can get really boomy on the condenser, so I keep uh, the lows mostly on the transducer. And then I'll bring up both volumes and kind of blend the signal together there. And that's how I get the fullest sound. Which I, which I really like um, coming out of this, this amp. And another thing I'll look at when I'm uh, setting up is I'll look to hear if I'm, if I'm hearing any feedback and sitting close to the amp, especially if you're turning up, you can get that kind of feedback. So I'll try and see if I have, here I'll flatten out the EQ and I'll see if I can hear any kind of feedback. frequency and I'll dial that out. Usually it's going to be in the upper end because you might get some rumble but if I cut there, I don't know if you heard that, there's a notch there. If I cut that, it's kind of taking out the guts of the guitar. So I'm looking for where it's feeding back on a frequency I don't want. And then I'll turn down either the EQ on another frequency that's bugging me and try to keep as much of the warmth of the guitar. And then on the uh, con condenser, it's much more critical to deal with the feedback because if you get high level feedback here coming from the condenser, um, the anti-feedback's not gonna do anything and you're gonna have to deal with it with the phase. 
And if you're in a situation where for some reason the room is just giving you a lot of feedback, you're going to have to turn down the condenser. And in another situation where everything seems to be fine, you can turn up the microphone and kind of rely more on the microphone sound, which is the truer sound of the guitar. So I play in a number of different venues, uh, different size venues, and when I have time to do a sound check and um, have a, a more in-depth setup where I'll have two guitars, you know, I'll bring the Gibson and I'll use that system. If I'm in a situation where it's a, a smaller venue or I'm not going to have a sound check, I use a simplified system. Uh, this is a uh, Recording King guitar, which is um, a less expensive solid wood guitar, which I really enjoy for its playability and it's not as precious as my Gibson, so I can take it on the road. And uh, what I've done with this is I've put an LR Bags uh, Anthem in here. And this is a, a really cool sounding system. And what it allows me to do is I can go into a small cafe with, the, with this uh, loud box and I can put a microphone in here. So I can have vocals, I have phantom power if I want to use a condenser microphone on that channel, and then I have a channel for the guitar. Um, what's uh, cool about these is this is also uh, a stereo system with a uh, transducer and a uh, microphone, but the, it comes out mono. So I can just plug in mono here. Um, usually it just sounds great uh, with the EQ flat. For my style, I'll put a little, a little low end, cut a little mid, give myself a little high end so I get a little more uh, definition uh, on the high and a little more thump on the bass. So that's my stage setup. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, you can read more on AcousticGuitar.com or in Acoustic Guitar Magazine. Um, I'm going to play you a tune here. This is one of my originals. And just a little something about my style is uh, based on... Uh, traditional folk finger picking and the finger picking of uh, the blues masters of the 20s and 30s. And then I like to take it and adapt it my own way. So that's why I call this holy guacamole because I mix in a, a couple different things. And one of the things I like to do is just take advantage of the open bass strings and thump along on the open bass strings and then uh, play riffs on top of that. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. It's called holy guacamole. <laughs>